Satan generally doesn't try to live in somebody. He tries to impact their mind and control the mind. But God is in us. And so God is greater than all things. What we have to understand when it comes to dress, this is important. Don't wear what the world suggests. Wear what God says will allow you to pass the test. When it's raining outside and you don't have proper rain gear on, what happens if you get there? When it's summertime, it's not smart to wear overcoat. When it's wintertime, it's not smart to go outside in the keys and trunks. You might get locked outside. You should get in trouble. My mom would always say, you know, be careful. Make sure you got your socks on your feet when it's cold because you don't want to get frozen. Like, put your gloves on so your fingers don't freeze on. That was what she but God wants us to wear what will allow us to be successful. How do we know that? First Samuel 17, 39. It's when David was getting ready to fight the lion. And Saul was trying to get David his gear. And the Bible says David girded his sword over his arm over his arm. Then he tried to go, but he could not, for he was not used to it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with thee, for I am not used to them. And David took them off. Saul tried to give David his dress. And when he tried to put it on, he couldn't utilize it. It wasn't fit for him. It wasn't set for him to do what he was going to do. God had already given him everything he needed. David had already gone down and said he went down to the, to the, to the river and found three, five food stones and a sling and put it in his pouch. That was the only gear he needed. But the other gear he had, he had the word of God. And whenever you try to put on something that God has not told you to put on and use that for the battle, He said, I can't, I can't wear it. It's, it's too, not only is it too heavy, I, I can't fight with this. I can't do it. And so the devil's going to always try to get God's people to take off the dress that God has told them to put on. God said, put on the whole arm of God. What the devil say? You don't need that. What you need all that. And so when you take it off, what happens? You're open to attack. All the time, you're open to attack. He said, put on a whole arm of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. The devil always trying to get you to drop your weapon. Have you ever seen a situation where somebody... Stand there with, with a gun. Who will have a gun or something? The old Western guy said, Okay, look. If you're a man, put down your gun. Let's fight like a man. In the old days, they would do that. Yeah. If they were honest, they would, both would put their weapons down and they would, they would fight with this. But the devil don't fight for that. You ever saw there's always somebody. Whenever they were fighting, they were getting beat, the devil would always reach up and do what? Throw dust in the eyes? The devil don't fight fair. So he tried to get you to take off what God told you to put on? Yeah, so that he can get an advantage on you. The reason why he told Jesus what he told him on the cross, you notice know he said was the thief. But you know what that thief said? He said, if you be a Christ, and then you knew it was that was the devil talking. He said, if you be who you are, if you. He said, why don't you come down from the cross? Yeah. Yeah. Save yourself. And then say, you know, he didn't say save us, he said, save yourself and then us. He yeah. wanted Jesus to put himself before, before God is before us all. He wanted Jesus to become selfish. And Jesus didn't come to save himself, he came to save us. Yeah. And so he was trying to get Jesus to put down the weapon. Come on down off the cross. Yeah. If you come down off the cross, they will follow you. And they say, whoa, look at this. Yeah. He just came down with the nail out of his hand, just came off the cross. That's not the purpose he was coming for. The devil always wants you to lose your dress. Yeah. 
What we have to remember is this. When things go good, don't forget God. That's key. He's giving you everything you need to achieve. But when you start achieving, don't forget about it. A lot of times, once God has opened up the door for us, and we start to step in, we turn our back. All of a sudden, I didn't do anything. I got this on my own. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I ain't nobody help me. I got this on my own. And then some of them make the mistake of saying this. If I lose it, I did it once, I'll do it again. Deuteronomy 18 and 14 says this. When you have eaten your fill and you've gotten food, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good man he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. You notice it not. I'm giving you everything you need to cheat. Be careful. Beware that your plenty and in your plenty you got, do not forget the Lord your God and disobey His commands, His regulations and decrees that I am giving you today. Once you get ahead, don't forget about what got you there. You got there by following the word. Yeah. Don't throw the word away. A lot of times that would happen. The devil said, you don't need that no more. You got the world now. You don't need all that. You got the world. You don't need all that. And the minute they throw the word away, the word consumes them. He says, for when you have become full, and notice he said, and prosperous, and have built, that was Holy Ghost, have built fine homes to live in. Now, know this now. When he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, there yeah. wasn't many fine homes. You know what you were in you? Just five, six, seven thousand years ago. He said, when you become prosperous and you built your fine, you built your fine home, right. the children of Israel lived in tents. Yeah. Right. He said, when your flocks and your herds have become very large, and your silver and your gold have multiplied. Along with everything else. No, he says, he said, be careful. Yeah. You get comfortable. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord you know. it, it kind of be like, uh, y'all heard the parents say it sometimes. I brought you in the I'll take you out. That's why Job said what he said. When the devil came back, the wife said, curse God and die. Yeah. You know what he said? He said, the Lord give it, yeah. and the Lord take it away. Yeah. That's it. Be the name of the Lord. Yeah. It was his to give to him, yeah. and he decides he wants to take it back, and he's supposed to take it back. Yeah. It wasn't mine in the first place. Acknowledge. Simply means this. Acknowledge God for all that He allows you to achieve. In everything, the Bible says, give thanks. Because whatever it is, give thanks. And then what Job was doing. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That simply means appreciate him by awarding him with your accolades. When people come to you and say, well, who are you doing a wonderful job doing it? I say, thank the Lord. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be where I am right now. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to do it. Compliment him by continuing to be committed to him. Don't throw his covenant in the agreement that you made with him away. A lot of times people will say, well, Lord, if you get me out of this and fix this from it. <laughs> Lord, I'll do this. Lord, I'll do that. The minute he does it, well, Lord, uh, you know, I, uh, I got something else to do right now, Lord, but you know, you know, Lord, I, I catch up with you. I'll do it later. Yeah. Don't break the commitment to him. Honor him by being humble before him and 
hold it back. And everything you do, always be humble to God. Because if you be humble to Him, what He said, He shall lift you up. Jesus, Jesus never, that old fool said, Jesus never got out of this place. He always stayed humble. Humble all the time. He says, give him an ovation. That means give him a cheer. Give him an endorsement. Give him a thumbs up. That's what all politicians try to do right now. Endorsements. They want somebody to come and say, yeah, yeah. That's the one man. Do that for God. Endorse him. But every opportunity he offers it opens for you. Because every door is open, God does it. Yeah. Every opportunity, yeah. God does it. He does things that we have never expected him to do. Sure enough. In our wildest dream. Praise him for performing what he proclaimed and providing what he promised. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be there with you. What did he tell the disciples of Jesus? He said, you're saying because I'm leaving. He said, but I'm not leaving you alone. He said, I'm going to send a comfort with you. Yeah. And all you have to do is just ask and call in my name. He said, who will come to you? Yeah. He gave us a connection on the inside. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You already got the connection. That's why I want to even woe for you to say, to say this. When you moan, the devil don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But in essence, they were quoting the scripture where it said, the Holy Spirit speaks to the Spirit the things that we can't say with our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, we've all experienced this. Maybe some of the young ones. Not yet. But you get to a point where you're hurting or something's wrong, you can't say anything. All you can do is say, oh Lord, just help me. You just... It's internal. But God hears that. When it's his child, he hears. Because he has placed that connection inside. It's like the internal hard drive. It's not what you got to plug into, it's already inside. Everything is already built in. Give him tribute, that means give him honors, give him respect. Respect God. Nobody wants to respect anybody today. And that's the key. Respect him for taking care of all things in your life. Yeah. Nobody wants to respect God. But if God decided right now, I said, okay, everything that I put in place, I'm going to cut it off right now. Just imagine. The earth is constantly spinning as we speak. Y'all been in the car, somebody throwing a break, man. You know what that's like, don't you? What is God saying? I'm just going to stop rotating right now. <laughs> you know what happened to us? We went all literally. <laughs> if he decided just to sell the air, we'll cut it off. Yeah, sure. I'm thankful the man can't control that. But if he decided, God decided to cut it off right now, it wouldn't be no such thing as waiting for the air to leave the room. If he decided to cut it off, he would just go. Yeah. Just that quickly. Yeah, a lot of times we say, God, God bless him. We live the best right now. Well, how we do that? We breathe. We woke up this morning. We opened up our eyes, saw, our ears heard. We were able to move. We're blessed. That's a blessing. Yeah. God didn't have to do that. Yeah. And the thing is, the unbelievers don't even realize God is allowing them to take a part in everything that he's doing, even though they don't believe in him. Because that's who he is. If he say, well, I'm going to restrict this to only my children, yeah. it'd be very bad. And I guarantee you know what happened? Hey, God, don't, don't, don't you know God? Can you please talk to him? Tell him we good friends. I'm a friend of yours, Bobby. Tell him you're a friend of mine. I'm a, I'm, I'm a friend. I'm a friend of yours. As you achieve, acknowledge. 
Sei bem. Ah, Even if something's not going right at the time, sei bem. Because God's doing it to burn something else up. I had to laugh a lot of times to make what we call y'all little sickness on, don't you? Y'all little sickness on? And so we would make sickness at the house. I would make sister down with sickness. I went to make her sickness last night. Then the Whitmore just, just broke the shack. I said, oh man. Can't have you sitting tonight, but I'll get you one more after we get you a little bit. See, see how God will upgrade stuff for you a lot of times? You're not even worth thinking about the upgrade. Thank you, Jesus. And he'll upgrade it for you even in the Emacs book. But what do we say? Why did they have to bring that? <laughs> Why did that have to happen right now? And next thing you know, he can upgrade it. But he does that for his children. Amen. 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 So, acknowledge. Same thing. Everything is in everything, say thanks. And God is blessed. Yeah. Because he, put, he said, that's the way it should be. That's his will for us. So y'all can arm to achieve. You got everything that you need. God's equipped you with everything that you need. Whenever the devil trying to take you what you ain't got, just tell him, I know what I got. I got it all in Jesus. I got it all. I would say, in Jesus, I win. That would say, in Jesus, I win. Yeah. Why am I able to do all these things? Because I'm connected to my soul. I'm connected to my resource. I got all the ammunition I need. You know, say, watch out, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. I'm loaded. So be careful. You mess with a child of God? Mm. Like this. I'm not going to say you're armed and dangerous. But I'm armed. I'm blessed. I'm ready. Now, what he said, you've been ready. You've been prepared. Yeah. All you have to do is just access it and put it in motion. And just make your way. What you want to do is align with what God wants to be done. And guess what? Everything is all right. Everything. So what's your arm to do what? Achieve. 